The Effects of Dark Patterns on Reuse by Claire Cambridge Acknowledgements While writing my undergrad thesis, I received a lot of support from my community. I would like to thank my supervisor, Rich Adams, for guiding me through the process. I would like to thank my professor, Ian Bates, for creating a calming class environment that made me excited to start my thesis. Finally, I would like to thank my friends, co-workers, and my sister, Liv, for supporting me for the semester in and out of school. Abstract. Design is a powerful tool. Sectors of user experience design are made to ensure designs benefit its users. Other sectors of UX design aim to meet company goals of user attention, information, or profit. Furthermore, specific UX patterns have been discovered and are called dark patterns, or DPs. A DP is a user interface design that intentionally changes the choice architecture in a way that benefits the company, but not the user. This study adds to a small pool of research that describes the effects of using DPs. Specifically, if DPs affect whether people will use a website more than once, reuse, and what can affect reuse. A survey of 33 people was conducted to test the hypothesis that DP use decreases the reuse rate. The study found that reuse was affected by the type of DP, mild or aggressive, level of composure, and participant mood. Results confirmed that mild DPs have little backlash and found that users will continue to reuse them. Introduction. Design is described as the function, structure, and appearance of consumer-facing technologies. User experience design is a multidisciplinary field that aims to create an enjoyable experience with a product or service. UX designers look at all product or service functions from a humanistic perspective. This field is often mentioned in website design. User interaction design is a subset of UX design that looks solely at the interaction and visuals of a product or service. These terms are often used interchangeably despite the difference in definition. Power of design. UX design has the power to influence behavior. Technology has become a significant portion of a person's day. With this increase in technology use, UX design has a greater reach and stronger influence. By designing the functions of a website, UX and UI design has a direct influence on choice architecture. Choice architecture describes the way choices are presented, and the way choices are presented affects how people make decisions. In a study by Cornell University, a UI change increased doctors prescribing cheaper, generic brand medicine from 40% to 90%. A field of design called Human-Centered Design, HCD, created a framework to ensure designers stay user-focused. Despite this, designers' focus still strays from the user to elsewhere. The shift is often from a user's wants to a company's wants, and is described as dark UX. Dark UX is made of specific UI choices called dark patterns, or DPs. Common company goals include clicks, profit, or information. This study adds to the small pool of research that uncovers the effects of DP use. A survey was conducted to discover the effects of DP use on participant reuse. This work adds to existing research by discovering the results and discovering how DPs affect reuse. Literature Review Taxonomy of Dark Patterns DPs were defined academically in 2010 by Harry Bringle. Further research refined this original taxonomy. This wave of research defined DPs as a concept, increased awareness of this phenomenon, and showed that its use is problematic. The taxonomy used in this paper is shown below in Table 1. Research struggles to clearly define a DP. Some say DPs are merely tricks, where others describe them as intentional manipulation. Overall, definitions include some or all of these four topics. 1. The UI characteristics used. 2. 
what it is that influences users. Three, the role of the UX designer. Four, the benefits and harms from the DP. Researchers agree on the taxonomy and that DPs affect choice architecture. But the role of the designer is less clear. When using DPs, designers are said to be aware of the manipulation present and intentionally use DPs. It is possible that DPs can show up unintentionally, for example, by copying other designs. However, this is a result of poor design and is called an anti-pattern, not a DP. Moreover, it is difficult to study the intent of a designer. Some studies assume that any use of DPs, whether they are anti-patterns or not, are intentional to have a clear study. The benefits and harms of DPs are still currently being studied. It is clear that DPs are a strong tactic that helps a company reach their goals. Liguri and Strahilovitz discovered some short-term effects of DP use. It is unclear what harms there are in the long term. In this paper, DPs are UI designs that intentionally change the choice architecture in a way that does not benefit the user. Power of dark patterns. DPs take advantage of human psychology to reach company goals. It most often uses the fact that people follow the path of least resistance. As described previously, UI design affects the choice architecture, while DPs change the choice architecture to benefit a company's goals. In other words, DPs ensure the option a company prefers is the easiest to choose. On its own, making one option easier to choose than others does not mean an interface has a DP. In the generic medicine study by Cornell University, they made an interface that preferred the option that benefits the patient. An interface that includes DPs must push a user towards one or more choices and those choices must benefit the company. Pushing users towards certain choices has great strength. A study by Scott Halpern demonstrated how making one choice selected by default, pre-selection, informs people's choices when making important decisions. Patients with terminal illnesses were asked to choose their preferred style of end-of-life care, life extension or comfort care. Compared to the control group, participants were more likely to choose the pre-selected option and less likely to choose against the pre-selected option. After participants discovered that the pre-selected option was randomly chosen, only two participants changed their decision. Other studies show DPs increase the rate of accepting subscriptions, sometimes doubling the acceptance rate. With the increased use of technology and smartphone access, DP use has steadily increased. It is present in e-commerce websites, social media, and other mobile apps. Of the apps studied, DiGeronimo et al. found 95% used at least one DP. These apps included big brands such as Netflix and Spotify. Studies on what happens to a user who is subjected to DPs is limited. Users become annoyed at different levels depending on the DP used. Mild DPs, such as pre-selection, are the most influential on the user and have little backlash. Aggressive DPs, like Roach Motel or a long series of mild DPs, are less effective, more annoying, and users are less likely to continue to interact with the website. Creating feelings of annoyance in customers is not beneficial for a business long term, as DPs decrease customers' brand trust, a key factor in continued use. What effect does DP use have on other factors to a long-term business relationship? Will DPs affect whether users use a website more than once? This paper aims to discover if DPs have an effect on users revisiting a website. In this paper, this action will be described as their reuse rate. Methodology. Research questions. How do the dark patterns, pre-selection, hidden costs, and forced continuity affect a user's reuse rate? Does level of exposure to DPs user mood, and single use rate affect the reuse rate? Methodological approach. To approach the reuse rate of DPs, 
a 16-question survey open to the public was conducted using Google Forms. The following Likert scale questions were asked. 1. How often do you interact with similar interfaces or had similar experiences online? 2. How do you feel using this interface slash with this experience? 3. How likely or unlikely would you use a website with this interface slash experience one time? 4. How likely or unlikely would you use a website with this interface slash experience more than one time? These four questions were asked under four different DP conditions, control, pre-selection, hidden costs, and forced continuity. These DPs are shown in order, imitating the experience of a subscription service. This order and choice of DPs were chosen for three reasons. Popularity of DPs used, increased immersion, and isolation of singular DPs. Subscription services are becoming increasingly popular online. The DPs chosen are ones that many people have experienced before and continue to be implemented. Secondly, when studying user experiences, participant immersion is key to receiving accurate answers. Recreating the flow of a standard subscription service increases immersion and accuracy. Lastly, the survey aims to see the effects of 1DP. Subscription services have less complicated UIs compared to e-commerce. Using less complicated UIs make it easier to isolate and study 1DP. Most questions were presented to the participant on 5-point Likert scales. Question 3 and 4 showed the scale from very likely to very unlikely. Question 1 used the 6-point scale that ranged from I have not seen similar interfaces within the last month, to multiple times per day. Question two then asked participants to rate how they feel using this interface on a scale from one, happy and relaxed, to five, aggravated and annoyed, similar to Liguri and Strahilovitz. Statistical analysis using Google Sheets was used to reach conclusions based on the responses. To calculate data, responses were converted to numerical values. For each survey question, the averages and modes were calculated to understand the responses. Next, an ANOVA was conducted to determine if there is a relationship between the reuse rate and other survey questions. For significant relationships, a Bonferroni post hoc test was performed to see which specific relationships are significant. For the reuse rate, the post hoc was calculated for all pairs of DPs. Other post hoc tests compared the reuse rate and another variable of the same DP for each DP. Limitations There are many limitations with this study. Due to time restraints, the survey was only available to the public for one week. This limits the number of participants to a small sample size of 33 people. The methods used to share the survey also limited its outreach. It was shared to the public using the researcher's social media, example Instagram, and personal outreach to friends. Another limitation of this survey is its lack of interaction. When studying UX, researchers need to know what users will actually do by getting participants to interact with their website. In a survey, there is no interaction between participants and a website. Because of this, the results are limited to what participants say they would do. However, what participants say they would do may not align with what they would actually do. Despite the limitation, due to time and limited resources, a survey was the best way to collect data. A final limitation of this study is that it is difficult to fully isolate results to a singular DP. Although precautions were taken, it is possible the rate of reuse may be affected by the culmination of DPs rather than individual ones. This limitation is more prominent in interactive studies. While this study is not fully interactive, presenting the DPs similar to a subscription service may affect participants' answers. Results After a week, the survey reached a total of 33 participants. Almost all respondents answered all questions. One respondent missed question 14, and one respondent dropped off at question 13. During calculation, 
the three blank responses were filled with the average answer. Reuse rate and dark pattern. It was hypothesized that DPs decreased the reuse rate. Participants were most likely to reuse the control example. The aggressive DP, forced continuity, showed the lowest rate of reuse. A one-way ANOVA was used to test the hypothesis that DP use affects reuse rate. The test revealed that DPs have a significant relationship with reuse rate. This confirms the hypothesis that DPs affect reuse rate. The post hoc t-test was performed to confirm which DPs affect the reuse rate. Relationships between all DPs except pre-selection and hidden costs showed statistical significance. Single use. It was hypothesized that single use rates would be similar to reuse rates and have an effect on the reuse rate. The survey found participants were most likely to use the control and least likely to use pre-selection one time. This differs from the reuse rates. A two-way ANOVA was used to find a relationship between single-use rate and reuse rate. The two-way ANOVA found no relationship between single-use and reuse. This data did not confirm the hypothesis that single-use rates affect reuse rates. Level of DP exposure. It was hypothesized that previous exposure to DPs affect the reuse rate. Participants were exposed the most to hidden costs. On the scale used, this is between once a week and every other week. Participants were exposed to forced continuity the least. This was about once a month. The two-way ANOVA found there is a relationship between participants' level of exposure to DPs and reuse rate. This data confirms the hypothesis that level of exposure affects the reuse rate. The post hoc test was used to confirm which relationship between level of exposure and reuse is significant. Only the control and hidden costs showed a significant relationship. For forced continuity, the averages for interaction and reuse were the same, resulting in a p-value of 1. Participant mood. It was hypothesized that participant mood would have an effect on reuse rate. Participants reported feeling somewhat annoyed and aggravated when seeing forced continuity. The participants felt somewhat happy and relaxed when seeing the control. The two-way ANOVA found statistical significance between the rate of reuse and participant mood. This confirms the hypothesis that participant mood affects reuse rate. A paired, two-tailed t-test was performed to see the relationship between participant mood and reuse rate. The post hoc test found participant mood affected reuse rate in the control group and for forced continuity. This data confirms the hypothesis that participant mood affects the reuse rate for the control and forced continuity. Discussion The survey aimed to answer two research questions. How do the dark patterns, pre-selection, hidden costs, and forced continuity affect consumer reuse? Does the level of exposure to DPs participant mood, and single use rate affect the reuse rate? Results from the study found that reuse was affected by DP, participants' level of DP exposure and mood, but not the single use rate. What affects reuse? Dark pattern. As hypothesized, participants were least likely to reuse forced continuity and were most likely to reuse the control. These findings add to the results found by Liguri and Strahilovitz. Participants are more likely to stop using aggressive DPs, e.g. forced continuity. On average, participants were neutral about reusing the mild DPs, pre-selection, and hidden costs. This confirms that there is little backlash when interacting with mild DPs, and users will continue to interact with them. The ANOVA found that a relationship exists between all DPs except for pre-selection and hidden costs. It is believed that there is no relationship between these two DPs because they are both mild DPs. This finding suggests that the type of DP, mild or aggressive, is more impactful on reuse than the specific DP. Level of exposure. Confirming the hypothesis, hidden costs had the highest level of exposure. Hidden costs is the only DP chosen that can be used outside of subscription services. With the boom in e-commerce and popularity of service apps such as Uber, the high level of interaction was not surprising. Similarly, 
forced continuity had the lowest level of exposure. Forced continuity requires users to sign up for its subscription service, while other DPs can be seen without user interaction. Research found that level of previous exposure only affects reuse in the control and hidden costs. The existence of a relationship between level of exposure and reuse aligns with the hypothesis. It is unexpected that this relationship only exists in the control and hidden costs. With the current data, it is unclear why the relationship is present. The post hoc t-test for forced continuity was inconclusive because, by chance, the averages were the same. This resulted in a t-value of zero. When all three DPs have different results, it is unclear why this relationship is present. Participant mood. According to the hypothesis, participants would feel happy and relaxed with the control, and aggravated and annoyed with forced continuity. The results match the hypothesis. These results also match those found by Liguri and Strahilovitz. In that study, aggressive DPs such as forced continuity caused the most emotional backlash, whereas mild DPs such as pre-selection and hidden costs had little emotional backlash. It is likely that forced continuity is the most annoying because it regularly spends large amounts of users' money. Hidden costs, the second most annoying DP, still spends users' money, but at a smaller scale. It is also possible that these results were due to exposure to multiple DPs. Studies discussing what affects participant mood will clarify this relationship. This study adds to previous research by confirming that strong moods affect reuse. A relationship between mood and reuse was found in the control and forced continuity. It shows positive moods increase reuse and negative moods decrease reuse. Neutral moods of mild DPs do not affect reuse. This increases the power mild DPs hold. They double the rate of acceptance, do not have an emotional backlash, and people will continue using them. What does not affect reuse? Single use. Contrary to the hypothesis, participants were least likely to interact with pre-selection one time. This result is believed to be because of the nature of the DPs. When experienced once, pre-selection requires users to take more action than forced continuity. Users need to be aware of pre-selected options. Then, if there is a follow-through, users may want to change or cancel their subscription. Forced continuity only requires action when users want to change or cancel their subscription. There is no relationship present between single use and reuse. This result shows that users interact differently depending if they will use a website once or multiple times. This goes against the original hypothesis. It is believed that users have different criteria when stating if they would use a DP once or reuse it multiple times. For example, it is less likely that a user would interact with pre-selection multiple times on one website. This makes the impact of the one time a user interacts with pre-selection stronger. Results highlight the importance of considering multiple viewpoints in design. More research is needed to discuss why relationships between reuse and the variables studied exist. Studies could explore the cause and effect of each relationship studied in this paper or discover new relationships with reuse. Further research should clarify the strength of the relationship present to further show why the results are important. If the relationships present are strong, it highlights the effects of DP use further. Further study on other effects of DP use is needed. For example, studying the relationship between DPs and brand trust. Due to the limitations discussed in the methodology, it is recommended to study larger samples and use immersive studies. Conclusion. This study aimed to discover the relationship between reuse and DPs, level of exposure to DPs, participant mood, and single use rate. This study found that users choose to use an interface more than once based on the type of DP they encountered, how encountering a DP affected their mood, and how often they had encountered the DP before. If a DP is more aggressive, a user is less likely to reuse an interface. If encountering the DP affects a user's mood negatively, they are less likely to reuse an interface. DPs are still a new topic of study. To understand the full implications of DP use, further studies should be conducted. Studies should clarify the results found in this paper or discover new relationships. 
This study adds to the small pool of research that discovers the effect of DP use. Becoming aware of the effects of DP use highlights the dangers or benefits of using them. The study confirms the dangers of using mild DPs. Users are affected by aggressive DPs but have no problem reusing mild DPs. When considering their strength, this is dangerous for potential users. As long as they are in use, mild DPs will continue to trick users. Businesses may benefit from DPs, but at what cost?